What is happening, everybody? I hope you've had a good time. You know, back in like 2005, something like that. I think my first podcast is Friday, Junior. It's Friday, Junior. It's podcast day. It's made it. And did you come out? You and a black plate. Doesn't matter how you feel about the situation. My name is Rap. And you're always before you started the podcast because we just want to talk about it. We'll talk about yeah. music. We can share those stories and experience. This is my co-host, Carl, aka the Beer yes, Buddy. He is hailing you from this sort of weird era where they're sort of right in that post-grunge. And I think your fight is a good fight in today's world. Uh, my war was fought 40 years ago, really. We are the two dudes who talk music, and we are here. Hey, I'm too, I'm too quick on that air horn button, oh, mate. How you doing? Man, yeah, that is amazing. I love it. You're second on the dude. Fantastic. What's happening, man? Good yeah, to see your good. face again. Good to see yours, good Hobie. See Friday, you. Junior. Friday, Junior. It's a good day. It's a good day. Oh, work's been hectic. Work's been hectic, but that's Always. how life is these days. It is. It's how life is these days. Have a bit of a cheers, and then we get into it. Oh. So today, we have uh, a guest from a band we've been trying to get on for a number of months. Yes. Ever since they uh, won the or earned their way uh, onto playing in Vakken last year, uh, we have with us today Jesse from Deprivation. Uh, thank you very, very much for taking the time to talk to us today. Very much appreciated. Yeah, yeah good. Uh, How you guys try doing? and get this now. We got the audio working. Yeah, this time, so sorry we'll, about uh, that. Try and cover that off. Um, but so before we, we we were talking kind of before. Um, just before we started there, like you obviously you're not an original member of Deprivation, but you have been in the band for quite some time now. Yeah, I've been one one of the longest running members of Deprivation now. I've been in the band for over ten years now. Wow. Well, we had our had our little three year hiatus, don't love each other that much. Oh, we love mm-hmm. each other again, it's all good. Let's uh <laughs> let's go back into it. Um so yeah, seven seven years, but yeah, ten years since I've joined. I didn't, didn't stop uh, liking it, but I've been a great big fanboy and a groupie and a fucking uh, road crew member and just an annoying little pest for a lot longer than that. Basically, yeah. since yeah, I I can remember going to Deprivation's first ever show back in Orange at the Battle of the Bands, and they were terrible. But for, like, well, they yeah. didn't have you. Oh, no, I was I was still in school, mate. I wasn't. I was, this, this was like my beginning of getting into metal. I thought I was still a bit of a metalhead, but these guys just went, "Oh, I can really like this." Yeah, they yeah. Had That's that fine. had that Lamb of God groove, which I really like. Yeah, and uh, just uh, from yeah, I started going to more and more shows as many as I could. Most because they did. God, they toured a lot when they were. Yeah, when the when the inception of the band, two thousand and six to what two thousand eleven, just relentless mm-hmm. country touring, like really, like how you should be doing it. Yeah, all the regional wanna, areas. If, if you want to yeah, make man. it big these days, like we've had we've had lots of uh, hiccups and stuff, but even before I joined the band, like a lot of the good groundwork has been covered. Like, mm. and we're mm. we're not, and we're all not, you know, super cunts as well. So it's always. Uh, <laughs> You know, not that terrible helps. to hang out with us. That, that, that helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Well, mate, I'll, well, I'll yeah. call you guys at the uh, Metal Alliance show. Yeah, should you? Yeah, yeah, yeah that was yeah, uh, that, 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 some technical difficulties on that one. <laughs> oh, mate, what happened? Um, my bass, my bass amp blew up about twenty-seven seconds in. So I got it on film. Like it just it, it blew up. I still need to get it repaired. Just yeah, it's uh. It, it stopped working and it wasn't going to work. A couple, yeah. of fuses, a couple of fuses have popped and it's it's uh, it's, it's not the best. It's but I can make do with other things. I do have a little bit of gear, but yeah, that's uh, it's a shit thing to happen. Yeah. So I spent the first couple of songs going fucking all right. Well, I'm just the bass player. Nobody's gonna really hear hear no. me or uh, you know making mistakes. It's not gonna sound. It's just gonna sound you know. A little bit less bassy, which is, you know, always a bit of a shame. 
But uh, yeah, spent the first two songs just going, what the frig's going on? Like, it surely it's not my battery. It's just changed all the things. Did my basic troubleshooting because my amp was still working at this stage. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, went to, I've done all this, done all this stuff and went to turn it on again. I've gone, uh, yeah, no, she's, she's cooked. So I just put it down and uh, picked up the microphone that I've used. That's the what it was. And, uh, there you go. Yeah, just became Ben's uh, little buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. There you go. Trying to take there his go. job. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was a bit of fun. I fucking I ended up spewing after. I haven't actually done a full set of vocals for like, <laughs> a long, long time. <gasps> it's very, killer. very unfit. Oh. Yeah, I've got to say, you on. guys, you guys were definitely in the uh, in the right frame of mind before walking on stage. You guys were, you guys were on fire. What I saw. Yes, yeah, cheers, dude. When you yeah, it was bloody. That was a really good time. Yeah, yeah when, I had, I had like, a good bit of depth having the other singer. I was like, "What the fuck's going on here?" I'm like, oh, yeah. "I've just got a film." I always do. I always do back and vocals, but yeah, not as much as I did. Like, uh, yeah, we were definitely going. You know, line for line it was helping mm. Ben out a lot it was a heap of fun hopefully I don't have to do it again because it's uh fuck I need to be a bit fitter if I want to do that, that it's sucks. it's definitely killer I mean I had one uh I had a set or show last year uh did bass a set of bass with nuclear vision and then I did um a set with Kid Crusher which was like an hour plus set with Kid Crusher where I was like DJ hype man backing vocals, like running around the stage yeah, to do it. And I was like, <laughs> bro, that's it, bro. I'm like, I was dying up there. I was like, I don't know how I managed to do it. Honestly, like it oh. fucking killed me. It did. I was like, I don't think like I literally the next day, I just didn't get out of bed. I was like, no, nah, I just can't fucking move. It's crushing. It really is. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, I will say like, I, so I didn't see deprivation during the early, like the first few years, mm -hmm. but I became aware of the name around 2008, 2009, thereabouts, but still actually didn't get to see the band until about... Surely, it was when, surely you were in tensions by then. Yes, I was in tensions arise, but... So we, I don't know if you remember, if you, I don't think you were in the band at the time, but when oh, Head PE to it, and there was a competition to support Head PE yeah. and it was, it was votes. It was all votes. It yeah. wasn't, it wasn't like, it, that's all it came down to. And it essentially for the Sydney show became a two horse race between tensions and deprivation. And I think we just eked it out. Yeah. We yeah, just yeah, squeaked yeah. over the line for it. Yeah, definitely um, got that one. Because recoil would have been uh, the, lead support surely yes yeah was recoil they, was the, the main support they did the whole tour i, I think love those dudes oh shout crazy out, good. shout out recoil absolutely yeah. that's who we we should definitely talk to recoil and see if they want to come on do talk was to it? those guys oh yeah we, oh, we every time we uh every time we bump into the boys just in random places we always mm. give them a little tickle come on come out of the woodwork you guys are sick. oh wasn't james, yeah james in that band james more yep yeah. yeah, 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 and his yeah. brother, and his brother for uh, for the end of it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen Recall. I mean, they were doing really well. They did a bunch of supports for for different international tours and mm -hmm. stuff. And like, I think didn't they do Static X? Yeah, they did a couple of the and, uh, tough, yeah, the, the yeah. Those type of bands, a bit of industrial type of feel. Yeah. Oh, they did. Oh, didn't they do Chimera? They I'm might sure have. They to, I'm sure they got to support. They might have it once. They, that that would have been a good fit. That would really yeah, have been a good fit. Exactly what it's um, exactly what it should have been. But yeah, I think it must have. So it was, but it was after I'd. I think it was just after I'd split with my missus at the time. There was a festival, music festival at uh, the Sando in Newtown, and it had like Red B and Deprivation and like a ton of different bands, and it was like real a real big a, one. The, the, um, the Lynch Marta one. That might have been the one, yeah. 20, um, the 20, late 2012, early 2013, thereabouts. Jeez, um, I'm showing her age, you rat. Stop it. And uh, 
but that was the first time. In. And I'm that was the you guys, and I'm still, still feeling old. <laughs> that was the that was the first time though that I actually saw Deprivation, and I was like, okay, Deprivation's playing. I'm gonna fucking make sure I make a point to check it out and say hi. And I was like fucking blown backwards when when Ben started singing up on that stage, like he's, that that he? the stuff that were they were blasting out, and his energy as a front man is just it is unparalleled in 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 you know he's definitely i think in the top tier in australia in terms of just the intensity that he brings yeah. in front of that band yeah um, I, I agree with that was back when he still had the just, mohawk too oh god and his big beard yeah would have been but yeah or it would have been either big mohawk no beard or yeah big pretty big sure beard. pretty sure he had a beard and, during that as well him and yeah. dan bock but he were right each other. Yeah. yes sick. yes um but yeah, I mean, and that was like, I know, you know, I just kind of said hi at that point. I didn't really get into any deep, but that was the first time I actually saw the band. But I was like, how the fuck did tension, how the fuck did tensions arise beat out deprivation in turn? Like, I'm not, I didn't understand how we had beaten deprivation. As soon as I saw mm-hmm. the band, I'm like, fucking Big fans, mate. You know? <laughs> but, um, fans. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I mean, and, and I mean, yeah, since then, uh just through being at various shows uh obviously with the band playing in you know playing in canberra quite a lot as well uh and you know tensions going to canberra and i think we did end up playing some shows together at various points as well yeah Um, we definitely played some shows together but uh you know getting to getting to know the guys and you know and even in um 2015 doing the um the heavy metal united show where it was like kind of all the super groups coming together um oh, Jesus, and yeah. yeah we had um i'm really really sorry i've forgotten the i've forgotten your guitarist's name Fucking. It escapes me which one lachlan uh yeah i think it was lachlan the redhead fella yeah lachlan. Yeah. yeah lachlan was was uh you know stepped up to be involved in one of those bands uh ben was supposed oh, to yeah he was supposed yeah, yeah. to be in, was ben was supposed to be involved but it, you did uh, it up in sydney yes yeah i was i wasn't oh yeah i don't think i did, yeah. uh, did anything part of that that was yeah yeah but that was really cool like talking about yeah yeah but his involvement in that was awesome as well um and dave, and, dave smith from Amorium. yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we got bunch of people involved for that which was great great fun and then yeah and then like i said just played with deprivation a bunch of times been to so many shows uh, over the years uh and i when i think about the talent that has been in in, the, in that band over the years yourself included in that because i mean i gotta say like as much as you know ben brings the intensity as well like you as a performer on stage playing and and just and doing the backing vocals and just bringing the intensity as well and the energy and the way you move around the stage and it's just that's the kind of stuff that more bands need to have and so many bands these days they just want to stand there and play you know look at the necks of their guitars because they want to yeah. play this really complicated stuff and it's not to yeah, say what deprivation plays isn't yeah exactly and it's not to say what deprivation plays is not complicated because some of the stuff is quite complex oh, a, but yeah. um it's yeah. you know it, it's it's complex the fact to fucking that... do when you guys move around so much i ain't never seen so much in there <laughs> on one stage it's awesome it's awesome to see yeah it's good yeah yeah no uh, we've definitely in the last couple of years well since getting jared in the band we've really uh yeah gotten, a, gotten really comfortable with our stage presence like i've always been a complete cock on stage always <laughs> but you have to be uh, well, I can I, I can make mistakes. Not that I do. I, I can I actually do practice. I actually, I actually do practice a fair bit, so I don't make that many mistakes. It's usually my fucking gear that fucks out before my fingers do. Mm. But uh, yeah, I've always just wanted to make a good performance for people. You know, just from being mm. always. And the bass player before me, Ori, he was my favourite bass player in Deprivation. Mm. Fucking big, tall guy, big, long hair, and sick, sick windmills. I was like, yeah. fucking, I have to be able to do that. Like, that's one, being able to do windmills well is always, you know, tough in itself, but it's mesmerizing, in my opinion. 
somebody's doing real good windmills you're like mm, yeah that's fucking sick and if you're yeah. playing it's always an added bonus you know it's, it's just showmanship for me i've always yeah like and look really it, it makes fucking it can throw it around yeah, it makes it so much more fun for from the audience perspective, and you know, I've, as as a, someone who's been on stage myself, it's more fun to be performative on stage. Mm -hmm. You know, I it, it, I always I don't feel if I'm just stood still and not moving around, I don't feel like I'm having as much fun as I am when I'm able to, you know, to move around the stage and and you know jump around a little bit, get involved yep. with stuff, and you do that with get in people's faces, fucking three thousand people in the venue or three people in the venue. Yep. Yeah can perform and that's yes. well it's, you, you don't really do the oh you don't know who's watching type of thing like yeah that's a bit of bullshit nobody's gonna out of those three people they're not fucking watching us <laughs> 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 not 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 yet but you're still you know go but that's to, it go you, into you know, every show thinking it like that like you're, you're there to perform people mm. have actually paid money like you know shit's fucking yeah fun. and you know, and like buy a bloody shirt off you after. Yeah, they just, and you guys you know. are you guys are you guys are a band that has always every show grabbed the audience by the throat because Jesus. that's because that's what because that's what you want when you go to a show. When you go to a show, you want to see the bands do that, and so yeah. you what you don't accept less from yourselves when you're up on the stage, and yeah. that is, uh, you know, that's something that I have, you know. I mean, yeah, I enjoy it from an audience perspective. I love seeing it as from the perspective of someone who's in a band and I get, you know, seeing that and, and playing on shows with you guys. It's always like, oh, fuck, it's like, put them higher, put them above us on the lineup because we don't want to try and follow that, <laughs> you know? Uh, thanks, um, it's just the, the power and intensity that deprivation brings is always, always impressive, never disappoints whatsoever. Yeah, um, I mean, that's that's the reason yep. why they got to Waken too. Like they they're the whole yeah. Package. The music solid, the stage presence is there. It's just yeah. The oh, it's got that absolutely. So so, 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 so much bounce on and stage. groove to it. Yeah, that's it. And it doesn't sound gross because you're Australian. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what, yeah, so give us tell us a little bit about that, like the process of. Um, yeah. like the competition and the heats and then and then how your experience was once you got there um and what it meant to you to to perform on the stage at essentially yeah. the mecca of heavy metal festivals yeah i'll give you a little rundown so yeah we uh the basement and we we're good friends with uh mick and nick from the basement and mm -hmm. they've uh they actually gave us the fucking uh the link for all the like, oh, enter in this and they mm. first did it when lycanthrope uh got through and thank mm. god we didn't uh enter that year because uh lycanthrope would have be beaten us those boys are fucking tough love those unreal guys. unreal love fellas those. yeah so that watching those guys do it was like oh fuck yeah how cool would that be and you know got to have a bit of inside knowledge for from those guys well not mm -hmm. inside knowledge just uh some tips because we're really good mates with them we got the tips yeah well like that that type of thing wasn't inside knowledge that uh, means we were fucking cheating <laughs> but uh and then yeah the next year we're like yeah we'll go bloody lenta and yeah the first uh we got we got through to the heat which was just in the uh, canberra and we played with yeah, a couple few sick bands there and just it was like a lovely Thursday night in Canberra. So, you know, just uh just the good 30, 40 people crowd, which is always mm -hmm. fun. Like the I like the Thursday nights. And then uh yeah, got through got through on that one, which was like a oh shit, fuck this. <laughs> let's see how let's see how far we can go with this. This is pretty exciting. And then uh yeah, a little bit of time to, you know, just figure out what we're gonna uh what set lists and stuff like oh well mm -hmm. we won with that one let's just keep with keep with the same set list we'll just do that and that's what we did went to the final and fucking watching the bands at the final like oh, jesus there's some fucking talent in australia like <laughs> very uh, good and my bands have been going oh man it's crazy it's so good to see and like bands that have only just started and bands like us who have been going for fucking almost 18 years and uh then you 
yeah, what bands have been going who just tour relentlessly, like the guys uh, or who play relentlessly, like Volgarite from Perth. Fucking hell, man. There's <laughs> those guys have got some fucking sick chops. They were very, very entertaining. But mm. I reckon they played more shows than fucking Kiss did on their last tour. Oh, <laughs> just yeah. They just fucking absolutely smat. They played so many. And then, uh, yeah, like Firestorm from Adelaide, they were fucking sick as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Bessamora from the crazy Russians from uh, Sydney. Jesus Christ, they go hard. Uh, yeah, shout out to Vlad. He's a he's a good bloke. And uh, you try to outdrink him on vodka and you probably won't be able to. Uh, never mess with it. Never mess with a Russian when it comes to no, vodka. They know how to do it properly. No. Um, but fuck, we went onto that stage just how we always go, just ready to bloody crush it. But, yep. you know, watching all the other bands there, like, oh, fuck, we got to probably, you know, play a little bit better to play do a little bit more rock star -y shit i suppose you know mm -hmm. and i think that just gave a little bit of extra flair there was a good crowd there as well so that's always nice when i get to do when we get the crowd participation going it's always mm -hmm. makes you play a little bit harder at the end of the day but i don't give a fuck if nobody listens to me i'll just call people out and try to get them to <laughs> until they yeah. answer me it's just yeah i don't get really disheartened by it it I'll just uh, keep pushing it until I get what I want. Uh, did that, played fucking awesome. Like we yeah, got off stage, we're like, Whoa, yeah, that was that was fucking sick. And then other band, and then Bessemora played after us. I'm like, oh shit, Jesus Christ, did we play good enough? Because they were fucking so good. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the, we just remember, night ended. Uh, I, Came back home to Newcastle and got the call when I uh, that morning, and was just like, oh no, the yeah that morning, and uh, yeah, just the oh yeah, we won it. Uh, it was a bit of a dumbfounded shock. Just what the fuck? Okay, that's uh, gonna have to tell the other boys who or, uh, call I uh, call them all individually all individually did not believe me which was fair enough because i talk a lot of shit and uh <laughs> they had all had all reason to not believe me but yeah no i had to go no no no, no. we're fucking we've, we've done it like we're, we're we're on through and it was fucking crazy like jared our drummer he's only he'd only just been he's only just been in the band for six months when he's played some of the craziest shows ever like fucking darkest <laughs> hour uh got to play with sacred reich and violence uh you know and you know he's this Watkins his next bloody show type of thing but mm. his uh his partner was uh about this big oh no oh, yeah no yeah way. with a boat yeah yes on on like basically on the on the way to pop so he yeah he drove up played the show and then drove the fuck back down, had the kid the next day. So fucking congratulations fuck. to Jared on that one. Yeah. But uh yeah, new kid and then you have to go pop up pop off to Germany in a couple of in a couple of months. But oh. it was yeah. So we didn't have uh, a great deal of time to prepare. Mm. Like with flights and you know all that yeah. like, so you can't really uh foresee the future and you know no. book it you early. don't you don't book and, flights yeah, to exactly. work just in case no no but uh so yeah a lot of logistic organizing just to try to figure out you know time off and all that crap mm -hmm. uh me and my partner ended up going a week earlier we flew over to uh we had a ton of a time getting over there i'm not going to get into that but we've made it to amsterdam eventually <laughs> and cool. uh that's we stayed a week there and one by one the boys ended up coming uh to meet us up there that was our little meeting spot so we Good all spot. had a couple of days yeah dude fucking excellent spot even yeah. if you don't fucking smoke pot that is such a fucking great part of the world people are nice the architecture is sick just yeah plenty of things to do and just really pretty it was really good and yeah i smoked pot so it was even better <laughs> <laughs> did it did it knock you on your ass because i've heard that that people 
it's a lot stronger than people anticipate because yeah, it was a lot like, of people like put you know put spin and stuff and do whatever. Whereas the, over there, it's just like yeah, they, some of it, just some of it fucking was bullshit. Some of <laughs> the some of it made you go, oh, are you fucking kidding me? This is been doing this for a long time, but this is fucking whoa. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, and then you got you because you you know you end up doing it a lot. It, you just got pretty used to it, but yeah, you got you yeah. bent, dude. It wasn't a yeah. yeah, it wasn't one to fuck with. Uh, you could get some shit that would really fuck you up. Jared, the drummer, ended up getting this fucking one that was. Oh, there, it's all joints. I didn't smoke cones over there. Yes. Yeah. It was just joints. Joints were the way to go. It was fucking, yeah, it was really good. But this joint that Jared got, it's called, I think, the Incredible Hulk. It was like, it, the ones that you get are usually about this big. This one was a little bit shorter and it was like smothered in keef, had oils. And oh, oils and no. Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Jared, and you know, Jared's like me, can definitely tolerate it. And yeah, he got about three, uh, a quarter through, and then like, yeah, had to had tap to out. tap that one out. That was <laughs> wow. that one fucking railed me. But uh, yeah, there's plenty of stories from Amsterdam, which <clears throat> which you probably can't out. tell. What happens, in, what <laughs> yeah. happens in Amsterdam? So, so, in Amsterdam. Uh, oh man, so many good stories. But yeah, we all uh, met up there. Which is awesome. It's awesome to have uh, all the boys just in a different country, fucking mm. about to about to play fucking this fucking insane festival that we've only been we've only watched on television and seen mm. our favourite bands and shit. Yeah, you know, it's like dream, dream, dream type of shit. And so we caught a train from Amsterdam to pretty much the border of France, called it, but in Belgium, uh, called Menen. Which is where we got a, a really sweet RV, which uh, slept us all, did all that thing, and it's only, uh, and then from there, it's only an eight-hour trip up to Waken. Like that's that's piss easy. That's fucking nothing in yeah. Australia. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's like yeah, you've you've Sydney. driven that for shows plenty of times. Yeah. It's not even fucking Sydney to Brizzy. That's uh, yeah. exactly. <laughs> like that's even even easy. with the highway easy. upgrades, it's even yeah, with the highway a, upgrades, it's fucking what, takes longer. What, what are we? That's Adelaide to Melbourne. That's all that is. Fucking, yeah, that's, that's yeah, piss that's easy. easy. So drove, yeah, uh, yeah, drove this big old fucking RV up through up through Belgium, a bit through, a bit more for the Netherlands, and then got into Germany. It was crazy. You could just tell when you were in different countries just by the the architecture and, like, the way that they would space some of their roads. Like, it was definitely, mm-hmm. oh, shit. Okay, we're definitely in the Netherlands because it was different to the German stuff. Just windmills everywhere. It was very, uh, not as many as uh, I hope there was. Okay. I was. Clogs, I would have got a. I would have got a tattoo of uh, a really sweet windmill if I got to see a really good one. We didn't get heaps out in the country. There was some. We did spot some, but there wasn't as many as fucking I thought there was going to be. I thought there was going to be fucking heaps. No, um, it wasn't. But uh, when we were getting through, we got to about. Uh, would have been about to, uh, Hamburg, which is uh, the very very top capital city of Germany. Like you mm-hmm. can't get any more. And then it just basically goes to bum fuck nothing and dockyards and shit like that. It's uh when we got there it started to rain and we're getting we knew it was pretty wet uh it working because we've been getting been, you know, keeping up with the news. Like they were getting a lot of rain, like and like an Australian amount of rain in somewhere where it doesn't, you know, rain like mm-hmm. it does in Australia type of thing. So they were getting fucking pumped and uh there was heaps of warnings like oh might have to like you know yes yes not yeah it was like cancel the festival not letting any people in type of thing it was just going fuck 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 of course getting to getting through hamburg just started fucking and down it was fucking horrid like so bad and we're on the autobahn People are going, still going like 250 k's past you. Jesus. And you can't even see, uh, you know, probably a stone's throw in front of you. It's that fucking torrential. And there's roadworks everywhere. Like, holy shit, these people are fucking insane. People don't fucking I pulled play. the short straw on that part. What was that? These people don't fucking play, do they? 
Oh, dude, some of it was uh, uh, crazy how fast they were going past. But I was pulling the short straw, so I was white knuckling fucking on the autobahn. Because I can uh, only, Big Bertha would only uh, go about yeah, 110. She, she wouldn't have done much, like, yeah. Oh, well, like it, it, it could hoon. I'm just, I, I was still doing, I was only going to go about 100 and shit, like 95. Like it was just fucking mm. skinny, skinny roads because of all the road works. And really uh, confusing fucking signs. You're like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to be in this lane, or is it like what lane is the the new fucking emergency lane? I don't know what the fuck. But we got uh, while we're doing it, they're basically saying, do not come to Wacom anymore. Like, if you are heading to Wacom, we're not letting any more people in. Stop. And we're like, fuck. Well, surely that doesn't apply to us. So we're like, we're, we're we're still fucking going, like not the yeah. keep driving. Well, like you didn't, but, you like, didn't go that far to, you didn't get that far to not try. Yeah, not to know. fuck. We're not here to fuck spiders. That's for damn nah, sure. Nah, mate. Yeah, nah. get, getting those fucking messages. You're like, ah, oh, what? Like, is it? Oh, it can't be that bad. And we get there uh, at about oh, 11 p.m. at night, and oh, a bit of a, it's still pissing down, fucking. Uh, all the boys are pissed at, like drunk as all the piss, you know, which is annoying when you know, when you're the sober one, one you're like, yeah. fucking just shut the fuck up. It's raining. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. I'm in a different country, and these I'd, like it was hard to actually get in. We got all the passes and stuff after a fucking oh god, it, another hour or something, just yeah, like it was going snail's pace like that and they're still not letting people in but we have to kind of go like oh we're the artists uh, <laughs> we're, we're, fucking import- we're fucking important dude like fucking let us in and like we we did we got to where our big camping ground was for the vip area and uh <laughs> it's it's fucked it's a it's a cow field at the end of the day like the whole of Wycombe's a big it's a country town of like 90 people the fuck. the rest of the year and then it goes up to fucking a hundred thousand but it's a it's a serious deal for the town of work and like <laughs> fuck but uh get there um and you just you you've not driving through this stuff the, there's mud this deep it is all fucked like i can't believe how muddy it was and people we're getting people are getting pulled in by tractors that's how fucking muddy it is like oh that's fucking so metal like holy fucking fuck. hell man that is and then we're, we're in line and would never would never happen here by the way like yeah, if any no, got, like canceled it, it would just would have it would have got canceled like straight away would have got canceled yeah. like never easy like easily just... which for all, you know probably for good reason because <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking hectic and uh so we get to the front of the line and the the guy on the tractor finally pulls out like we've been waiting for fucking three hours like it is late in the morning i've started drinking by the way because i'm not technically driving anymore it's uh getting ro- it's getting towed in yeah getting towed getting rolled. <laughs> and fuck we get told oh you need a like a front tow ball what well, the fuck and where the fuck's the front tow ball like that's one thing that the uh guy that we got the uh they People probably didn't need to mention how the fuck is he going to know that we were going to need the yeah. bloody front toe ball? So we've got Jared, he's hopped out of, in his bloody, <laughs> in his, like, all, basically just in his undies, on his hands and knees in this shitty fucking mud. Like he's bottomed them out. He's so fucking, it's so he's great. As looking well. for, yeah, yeah, just looking for. In, in the dark at like, 3 a.m. Like, looking what for the a fuck? fucking where is this Jesus. thing? And uh, I'm just sitting in the like in the driver's seat, just going, fuck, but this is fucked. Like, I'm a bit shitted off by now. I'm just tired. Fuck it. It's all like a big day, big day of driving. Fucking, I'm mm. over it. And uh, I probably could have uh, helped out because guess where you reckon the toe, toe ball thing was? Under my seat. So uh, after a fair bit of fucking around, we found it. It was it was under my seat. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, so we got fucking oh absolutely sledded. Motherfucker! Whoa, Jesus Christ! Pulled in by this tractor. Parked it up. All right, everybody's good. All right, fucked asleep. We'll start working tomorrow. Get up at the fucking 
crack of dawn and it's actually dried up or it's not raining anymore thank god but it is so muddy and we get to see this path of destruction that this these tractors have caused and like it's crazy the ruts are no shit but you'd fall you'd fall down you'd fall down one and you'd break an ankle type of thing oh my it. god and then just churn it up but uh we went for a little walk uh we happen to have a uh, had some mates in Warkin who manages to manage to find us some uh, gum boots, which is good. They were the most expensive gum boots, so I think they ended up being like uh oh, no, 70 euro each, something like that. So I mean you're Europe, European mate. European yeah, mate, you know. Oh no, they were pieces of shit, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've all got fucking PTSD from these buttons. Oh, uh, oh. But, it's we did, but we had, we had to go and well. fetch the well. We had to go fetch these fucking uh, things. We had to walk all through the mud. Everybody's lost their double pluggers. It's all fucking like we're just <laughs> get going. We're just going, you know, barefoot from now. We'll just, you know, I guess the Aussies, they're the ones who've got no shoes. <laughs> uh, get to the, and get I, to where we, you know what? we so, need sorry to, to yep. Sorry to jump in, but in, in my head, I'm like... <laughs> In my head, I'm just picturing. I'm picturing the lot of you with like footy shorts, mud barefoot, mud up to your fucking thighs, just yeah. like fuck shit, cunt, yeah. fucking <laughs> just fucking mud, fuck cunt. Oh and like, no, there was there wasn't that many. <laughs> there wasn't that much swearing. It was more laughing at people doing fucking <laughs> some the old Gumby steps. Or, Whoa, <laughs> shit, fucking like, it was it you can't you can't be getting cranky at the mud you're at work and fucking everybody's in the mud at the moment like what the, what are you gonna fucking complain about we've had our complaint last night and we've gotten it out of our system let's go fucking right. party let's go see what the fuck this shit's all about fair so, enough and get to the uh but yeah we were so like yeah, lachlan looked like he had gum boots on already like, oh. with the, like it was fucking hilarious. Uh, but we get to this, uh, it's called the VIP area, which was, we thought was the, like the artist village type of thing. And this VIP area was fucking sick in itself. It was awesome. It was massive. You could see the main stage from it, like on a little platform. It was just sick, sick, sick. And then we find out that, oh, no, 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 no. That's like a full on artist village around the back getting there. It's like, oh. Like, oh my God, like everything was just like, it was wet as like it poor people having to set it up. Like, it would have been so gorgeous if everything was bloody, you know, sunny and all that. Mm. But, uh, you, you know, you make with what you can do, but dude, this artist village, uh, you've got, um, free hairdressing, uh, there's saunas, there's masseuses, uh, there was, <laughs> uh, like some pretty sure there was a psychologist there cash having a bad ah. time but it was just it was full decked out and uh, uh then you got the big dining hall where there was free food free booze uh and like the big barbecue thing out the front and you've got all the dressing rooms out the back and then you just you know you're just seeing all these fucking artists that you're like we definitely don't belong here. We're like we're this little band of <laughs> fucking no, competition. Fuck that. Exactly, and you we, won a you know, competition. And we're about to go. Spot. Well, oh, oh, thank you. But like, fuck, it's just it was crazy to be able to interact with some of the people that came in. Like, I could waffle on for hours of how many fucking bands that we bumped, like just ran into or got to hang out with. But like. For example, you know, we're having uh, breakfast with, like, we're not with Dave Mustaine, but he's just up the, you know, on the other end of the table, you know. No, I'll count that. That's with, with his... Dave Mustaine if you're on the same table. Yeah, That's yeah exactly. That's breakfast with Dave Mustaine. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. it, if it wasn't outside. separated and it was just, if, yeah, even exactly. if it was we're one in the same long, room. gigantic table, you had dinner with him. We probably pissed on the same fucking toilet, you know. That's it. That's it. But, yeah, dude, like, uh, Kill Switch Engage, fucking... <laughs> Beartooth, uh, Ginger, uh, uh, we got to bump into some of the old oh, Steve, Steve Harris from Iron Maiden. He was, nice. the only, he was the only Maiden guy that apparently we were like some of the only people that he took photos with. Apparently he's not a very big photo guy. Yeah. 
Oh, Which is fair enough because he's fun as a shit. That's <laughs> 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 real serious. Poor cunt. Oh. <laughs> but uh, did, did fuck, anyone yeah, do the whole? Just, did anyone do the whole? Okay, they're over there. I'm gonna walk over in that direction and bump into a bit. Oh hey, oh oh, is that you? Uh, uh, <laughs> that's that's how we probably pictured it in our heads. Most of it was like. Holy fuck. Ah. That's fucking Jesse Leach. See you later. I'm going to go meet him. <laughs> like, Fair enough. Fair like, enough. Oh, I mean, look, you, you don't get these opportunities often, right? And it's, mm, and, and, and as, yeah. as Kyle said, as Kyle said, like, you, you know, you guys, you won the competition by the organizers of Bucking. You absolutely earned the opportunity to be there. But on top of that, beyond that, right? Deprivation, as you said, is like it's coming up on 18 years. The fucking work that has gone into that band over the years deserves to be paid off. So, you know, and, and and I've said many, many times that so many bands from Australia, if you were to transplant them to the US, like wholesale, if you just if everyone could just pick up, go to the US and be doing what they do exactly what they're doing. Uh, but in a, in a, the market that's the biggest market, the most available market, yes, it's very crowded, but you've got access to all of the people much more readily than you do over here. Yeah. You could transplant bands over there. They would go gangbusters and be like national, international artists like easily. And Deprivation is without question one of those bands. So, one day, mate. You know, it, it it's it's something that obviously, like you know, you've you've had you know you have the experience and you're there and you it's I understand what you mean about feeling like oh my god, like we don't belong here, but I would argue that deprivation did belong there. Oh, deprivation yeah. does belong at things like that oh, because the works but the work has been done just as much as any of as as so many of the other bands that are on there, um, yeah. and and you know. Like I'm stoked that bands like Deprivation and Lycanthrope are getting the opportunities through this competition to go and represent Australia on that stage because like the world need these bands, other bands and people that are involved in the industry need to see what Australia has to offer. Mm, I agree. Because you, you know, well, like Australia's you, you killing it at... though. We've got some fucking, got some rippers up there at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, I, I know um, they're more like I know they're in the like the pop punk vein, but Stand Atlantic has been going gangbusters. Like they've been, they yeah. played on uh, Good Things recently, like, you know, and, and yeah, were absolutely killing well. it. They were doing a yeah. lot, a lot, of really impressive. Um, and I think there is people are starting to open their eyes to the fact that the talent is here. Yeah, Aussies have got some, got some something special. I... And, and Kyle's even argued that that we almost have that Aussie metal and, and especially like that Aussie prog band, like leaning oh, bands, almost have a, their own unique start. That's like a unique version of it mm. that, it, you know, you don't really get anywhere else in the world. You know, bands like yeah. Carnival and uh, Butterfly Effect, even Cold. even 12, even 12 Foot Ninja, 12 foot Ninja as well, like, foot. yeah, have absolutely like a style that you, no one else, nowhere else in the world do you get that no. but here. No, just us weird Aussies fucking with our weird music. Yeah, well, we're just so fucked because we can't because... we can't possibly fucking come up with anything ourselves. We have to go have a big blend. Here we go. No, but, Let's yeah, fucking free. It. Let's make it Aussie. But like this is the point. This is the point that I made like a few weeks ago. Was there's because so many Aussie bands don't lay don't labor under the illusion of trying to quote unquote make it as in become global megastars out of it they just want to they do the music because they love it and they're passionate about it it almost results in like there's less pressure to sell out due to less less pressure to do what's trendy mm. to try and get popularity so it's almost well, we more music pure video, mate. it's almost that's, more that's how trendy more, we are it's almost more we'll pure from an artistic standpoint because there's, they're like they're able to just go, well, fuck it, we're not going to get big anyway, so we're literally just going to do what we want to do, and enjoy it, and make you know, and not compromise on any of that, um, which, you know, as I said, I think that allows for a much more clear artistic vision 
from not in a wanky way, but just in a way of like, this is the music we want to make, so we're gonna fucking make it. Mm. And there's no label that tell you and, what to do. Yep. Yeah, and that has that has I think that's what's allowed the proliferation of so many incredible Australian bands across such a broad spectrum of of you know of genres, but also has allowed for certain Australian bands to really take off and mm. and become and shout that... out to the hardcore boys because they've been yeah. fucking putting in the work for so long they deserve all of it all that fucking yeah. underground scene which is not so underground anymore yeah, yeah. absolutely and like when i was in the us last year i like made a list in my phone of australian bands um that you know as many as i could think of and name and uh i was like look and I, everyone that I was that I would talk to about music, I would be like, "Here's a list," uh, and I'm like, "I don't know how many of them are active anymore. I don't know how many have stuff online that you can listen to, but here's a list." And it was like five fucking notes app pages long, yeah, nice. of of bands. And I'm like, "Check these fucking bands out because it will it will rock your world. Like mm. the amount of the amount of talent and the incredible stuff that you will find here. You are gonna find a new favorite band on this list." Yeah. uh and you know and it's just it's just mind blowing to me the fact that you know the the bands that have put in the work and that that's finally able to get some recognition like that for you guys have, and that have worked so hard over that time you know uh like like you deserve it fucking ben deserves it for fuck's sake like you know he's been hustling for so long with with deprivation um to so see was, so was, so was Lachlan. yeah exactly they're like the, to see the originals well to see Lachlan you guys have original. that have that opportunity right. to to go and do that you know um so tell us about like the day that you played and and yep. the set and the, the crowd and just how the hell was that because it must yeah. have just been like i know when when um like and we had you know uh, Stoya from Lycanthrope on to talk to us about his experience after they did it, but uh, they got the, you know, they got the sunniest wanna... day Wacken ever had. He said he was still yeah. thirty degree day. Yeah, yeah they... and he was also in a, he was also in and out in the almost couple yeah. of days. Poor bastard, he had to go back and work. He couldn't yeah. even really yeah enjoy it as good as I reckon he because fuck, he's he's the type of guy who loves having a walk around and have a good. You know, really take it all in. That would have yeah, been yeah, frustrated yeah. him just going in and out. <laughs> but uh yeah, uh the day that we played it actually had started to dry up, but we brought a bit of Aussie weather over. Thank fuck, because it was yeah, looking like it was gonna be really bad. But uh we got picked up in our in our cool van, a little shuttle bus to go from our uh camping site to the stage. Because it's the only it was the only day we were allowed to go like on the backstage area uh so yeah we got picked up there we got because it was just the the metal battle stage at that mm -hmm. stage just had uh there's a couple of tents for each of the stage stages just with bands you know doing doing their thing uh so it wasn't like a, a that's not like the that was just not the cool dressing room experience that was back yeah. at the you know the artist things it was just you know we were everybody else is uh you know doing their huddles and stuff and we're doing our own thing fucking i'll come over with the jaeger every now and then there you go have a sip and then we'll fuck off and do our own thing as well like and uh it was funny because the big judging panel there we got talking to some of the judges later on they were like you guys aren't really a team unit like before it like, yeah we don't fucking yeah we, we've been a band for so long i don't need to bloody do the huddle mm. and fucking yeah, like, yeah go team kiss each other. maybe we should start doing it because uh it could have been a you know a couple of points up but uh <laughs> what do they want you to do all we'll next like time. A, put, put your hands in deprivation Whew. pretty yeah i reckon they were looking for a bit of uh team camaraderie and in, in some of their mm. judging criteria which they is obviously fine, don't know right, how but... Austra how australians work we go, yeah exactly like, i don't want to talk we look to at each other and they go it. Yep. You're right, dickhead. You ready to go? <laughs> you ready to fucking do this? Well, yeah, let's fucking yeah, do this. Right. Know, Put your more, game face on. More often, <laughs> more often than not, we're playing at a at like a a pub or like you know if it's it's venue like the basement, you know, 
someone's off having a smoke someone's you know yeah. someone's off doing whatever it's just like we just kind of do our own shit. Exactly. Uh, okay yeah we got to be up there all right cool like yeah, we'll so see, in a, see in a sec i'll be up there yeah and then we'll two minutes before stage. we got to go on stage all right it. yeah yeah exactly uh so yeah we're all fucking very excited uh we uh we all use wirelesses but we couldn't use the wirelesses on there just with frequency issues and all that mm. so that was a bit of it was a bit weird to had a pretty long lead but it wasn't long enough to do what i you know would have loved to do and just fucking Oh, just go back and forth on the stage. Like, oh, it went great because it's such a big stage. Like the size of the stage that we played on is like the equivalent of what the main stage of Good Things is. Like, Jesus, wow. that big. Yeah, yeah, the main stage at, at Wacken is like Good Things on crack. It made it, it, dude. Like it's they are so big. You have uh, yeah. It's hard to even describe how big it is. Like, look at all these room for activities. Justice. Fucking, so much room. Yeah. You'd be so um, you'd have to be the fittest kind ever to be able to, you know, navigate those stages. It's so big. But we yeah. got on like there's fucking huge side fill, there's monitors galore, like the sound on just when we're doing our little sound check, just going, What the fuck? This is different. Like this is so loud, so crisp. You could just because you know, basically you've got the entire mix coming as your side wash as well so mm. you're just in hearing everything it didn't you didn't really need to rely on fuck all like it was so my bass was just rumbling the ground it was excellent so good and yeah just all fucking getting you know nerves nerves out like because it was pretty nerve-wracking because yeah we're about to represent the country don't really want to mm -hmm. fuck it up we haven't really had any practice like not that we, not that we do a lot. Really, <laughs> we rarely practice. It's just you know, do you fucking do you practice at home and get mm -hmm. on stage and play the same fucking song? There you go. There's your, you know, that's how it should be done. You know what the songs are. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not any, wrong. Anybody, it's so not wrong. Anybody, anybody, if anybody learns a song that well, you should be able to go on with anybody and just bloody play it. It's yeah. fucking. How yeah. it should be. As long as your drummer's like, doing their job, exactly. Should be fine. And most of, and fucking Jared's a bloody weapon. He's fuck. He's good. So glad to have him. But yeah, uh, first note. Fucking, you could, we're just like, oh, here we go. This is ready to go. Ben fucking does his. Yeah, Ben's just a little menace on stage. He's everybody eyes on him straight away, which is he's a menace yep, off stage how, too. Let's be honest. Yeah, he's, a, he's, yeah, he's. I mean, he's, he gets he gets wild enough when he's got like thirty people in front of him. I can't imagine how, like, commanding of the crowd he must have been with oh, with thousands at have, his whim. But this, what was I think made made it a little bit better for the crowd and people surrounding people that were watching. There was a lot of more of the hardcore bands that were playing a bit before, a bit more of your yeah yeah blended punk type of stuff as mm -hmm. well it wasn't really but like we're we, we're pretty metal at the end yes. of the day mm. so you could do, you know we, we can bring the long hairs out to have a swing and i think a lot of people in the crowd appreciate oh fuck yeah here's some here's some metal and it's got some groove so we had a really mm -hmm. good crowd reaction straight away and like you were saying we did, uh before where Depp t tends to have a good crowd always yeah we and it's cool to watch that from a really big stage like that just watching people go you know it's pretty cool i'm gonna just hang here for a bit i don't have to you yeah know, have a really i don't have to look like i'm having the best time but i'm here and going mm, that's not bad at all i haven't left like that's what we wanted we want people to stay yeah had like basically a huge beer garden uh just across from the stage that ended up coming towards us so we ended up playing to a good oh, a couple of thousand people by the end of it so it was that, you know biggest yeah. biggest show that we've done ever it was fucking awesome to do that but the command on the crowd was crazy like you know you could you, you give you go you know let me see your horns you do that at an aussie crowd you get fucking you get your diehards doing it 
And yeah, you get five <laughs> people. You get a couple of and then you get a lot of it, and, But everybody's just, yeah, like, everybody's just fucking stoked. Like, you could, you could just, you could tell them to bloody go and belly flop in the mud, and they probably would have. Like, it's so good. Uh, like, even when I did my cheers cunt speech, just everybody, just immediate reaction to it, which was perfect. I probably should have said <laughs> that it's a term of endearment on live television before I said it. But that's okay. I got to say it six times, so I'm oh, uh, pretty happy with that. There you go. Yeah. I could only yep. imagine what what is this word that they are saying, cunt? Uh, yeah. Oh no. I, yeah, I actually learned how to do the whole speech in German, and they I happened to bump into a German, like a, a, a bumped into heaps of Germans, funnily enough, in Germany. <laughs> yeah. and, but uh, this one dude, he was just <laughs> started talking to me. And uh, he was like, well, let me hear what you're going to say. And uh, I said it, and he was like, oh, it's perfect pronunciation, but don't don't say it. Like, yeah. don't, it's uh, it's okay for you to say it in your own language, but do not say that. Like, it's, it means very bad things over here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, all right. I, I better Fair not enough. Yeah, go and say people in their own language. Because, yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably it probably doesn't mean cheers, cunt. It probably no. means something a bit different. It, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Definitely the cunt part, I think, is taken a little bit more serious over there. Oh, but, uh, man. Got off stage, fucking, we were oh, on fire. Like, that was one of the best performances we've ever done. We're just fucking all, all, uh, all guns blazing. <laughs> Everything was just, you know, poor. Oh, the adrenaline rush was so hard to come down from. Crazy, yeah. like, you know, you got the got the shakes everything was so good uh had really good response from uh from everybody in the crowd ever uh, and other people that we bumped into later on they were you know we're getting smoke blown up our ass real good it was fantastic because <laughs> <laughs> uh, they've got uh like it, their heads were home this much stuff. bigger that day oh <laughs> uh, yeah i floated home it was perfect <laughs> but like in the kitchens and like all the you know, the dressing room tents, they've got televisions that have got, you know, all the stages playing. But, yeah, we even had people from the kitchen go, oh, you, I saw you guys, you know, when I was cooking burgers and stuff. Like, you guys were sick. So it was really, you know, really good response from people that were, were you know, didn't think we would have been watching. Like, it was mm -hmm. fucking excellent to have uh, such a good response. And, yeah, from, from there it went on to, yeah, all the rest of the bands played and then we, they did a judging thing a, a couple of days later and uh <laughs> excuse me we ended up coming uh 10th out of the 30 bands that were there so wow, that's, that's very insane. respectable Abs Dude, that's yeah. very respectable absolutely fucking fantastic result so keep in mind keep in mind that's not top 10 out of 30 bands that's top 10 out of all the fucking bands from all around the world that were in that yeah. competition however however so was in there. that's like you know, when you think about it, like how many do they Thousands. have in Australia? It's probably like a hundred bands in Australia well, that yeah, all they're, across they're, the world, that, that all across Australia, but time they narrow it down to yeah, one band. A whole bunch of bands submit that didn't even get into so, the yeah. Into the so that's as well. So that's like top ten band from you know out of hundreds, if not thousands, across the world Definitely that tried that were in result. that competition. So yeah, that's extremely respectable. We are and uh, yeah. Oh, I I can't imagine how. Like, I think. So I think what's if I remember correctly, Stoya said it just kind of, once you're playing, once you were playing, uh, he was playing up there. It was just like, yeah, I'm playing, and it's just kind of on autopilot because you you it's the stuff you played a thousand times, and you know yeah. how to play it, and you're just doing that. But it's and it goes really fast and really slow all at once, and it's like it's over before you know it but at the same time it's almost in slow motion because you can't believe it's happening and your adrenaline's going so fast uh is, is that that's similar to your experience yeah, with it so well described from uh Stoya. Mm. that's yeah it's spot on maddie you fucker <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it goes yeah it's exactly it's you can remember so vividly everything that happened but fuck it can it was so like it was the yep. most expensive 20 minute show i've ever played but like, <laughs> we only played there it was only 20 minutes yeah like, everybody played for 20 minutes which was you know just cool it's just in and out the 
fuck the organization was just absolutely top tier like mm. that, all, that the, show. all the all the back line and all the production over there is just oh it's like a tightly wound uh it's just so good so fucking tight mm. um yeah can't believe how smooth everything went well like, especially with all the hiccups they had with all the rain and shit like everything is so so good well the germans are known for their efficiency Yes, they are indeed. Sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that after that, we just, yeah, but I, I didn't really watch that many bands. I hung out in the artist village for most of it, just oh, hanging out, enjoying, enjoying the free piss. Yeah. Yeah. Try, yeah. To, try, you, to, see, yeah. try to get some, like, can I get a selfie? Can I, can I get a selfie? Just quick. Yeah, there was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There was definitely a few people that we ran into and we, made uh good mates with a lot of the other ba- battle bands as well um, great mates for, uh, from the, the death and tiger boys they're from bullshit I might fuck it up here lithuania <laughs> <laughs> i hope i don't fuck that no it's lithuania definitely uh those guys are sick they played like heavy heavy death core it was awesome like, i was i was in their pit fucking having a swing it was awesome um and then uh from Caribbean met some blokes there, uh, or well, met some blokes from there, uh, guys from Turkey. Uh, the guys who ended up winning the competition from Japan, they were pretty cool as well. Oh, oh Jap- uh, Japanese metal bands go fucking hard, dude. Oh man, they're, like, yeah, they're this, they're they, they, and, and the shit that they, yeah, then because they've got like such a different mentality about music entirely, it's just like the wildest, yeah. zaniest shit, but they make it work. I'm um, just, mm-hmm. just, yeah. Some of the bands like coming out of Japan, like obviously not so much baby metal, but like Devil Oof. I don't know if you've yes. heard of those guys, that that I've crew, heard, but I've heard of them. But they're like, then you, know, you got Crossfade, you got Crossfade, yeah. Crossfade. Yeah. And you get Deer and Deer and Gray yeah. doing yep. their stuff, like just like oh fucking yeah. Crystal Lake. It, it's it's wild. Are they, are they from Japan? Are they Crystal Lake? Pretty sure. I'm gonna double yeah. check that. Oh, no, I, I didn't. But, no, I'm not interested. Um, sure they are. Yeah, they got some fucking. Yeah, they got some sick stuff. Pretty sure that within Temptation bands, based from there as well. Mm. Yeah, it's it's wild the stuff that's coming out of Japan. It's just like, I it's, it's such an underrated uh, thing. Much like Australia, a lot of stuff you know, like Australian has their kind of their own style, and which granted is much more similar, is much more Western, and and you know not as wild and out there as the stuff coming out of Japan, mm. but like it's just so it's very they got their own kind of very unique vibes on a lot of it which i love i think it's amazing and i love to seek that stuff out yeah, agreed yes um, crystal like our J- japanese can yeah go cool there you go yeah nice there you go yeah, cool. um so before we dive into um the the first, before we dive into the first of our segments i want to touch on you guys obviously had there's obviously the amalgam album from 2011 yep um and I'm just looking on YouTube music here to see what's what's there. There's been a few singles over the years since then. Yep. Is there and any EPs? E- yeah. So is there any more talk of like a, another full length album or is it just going to be sticking to shorter form releases? Uh, we definitely um, got a single in the works. Single yep. is going to come. Uh, it's, it's one of those hard decisions to make. I'd love to do albums. I know Lachlan would love to do albums as well. But... Uh, not everybody listens to albums yep. very start to finish anymore. They're a bit, you know, it's, I, I do, I still do because I fucking, yeah, I do, I do it because I just, you were raised properly. Do it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> people, so it's good. Just, you know, the format of what a lot of bands have been doing, just pumping out little singles here and there, yeah. to keep people busy and then not even put out a full long play, just put out little, EP. yeah. Um, I mean, look, we've, we've, you know, we've known this for a very long time. Quite often with a full length album, there ends up being some filler on there, even if it's not intended to be, uh, you end up with some tracks that maybe people are not as keen on. Whereas if you were to go, look, let's just take those out, keep working on them and go like the six strongest fucking songs that are all absolute bangers, fucking shove that in people's faces. And then you can do two or three of them as singles or film clips or whatever you want to do if you want to do that stuff, but you've got your strongest material. And I suppose with everyone being spread out, it is, um, you know, it doesn't make it any easier to try and record. 
yeah. uh, for stuff like that as well. Um, yeah, but it, it's, we've all got bloody, we've all, all got, you know, busy jobs. As yeah, well. yeah. Like it's hard to, it's it's hard to continue writing music all the time. Like it, yeah, try to do it, but it's you know you need to kind of have that either a bit too bit too much time on your hands or a little bit more time on your hands or be going towards that place where you're like if you really want to you know make this the next thing yeah. you're gonna go like quit your job and fucking really hustle yeah, yeah. onto it. But that's that's so, we're not at that stage yet. Yeah. No. So when do you when do you think this this single sort of might be coming out? Is it oh, it's like a this a bloody good question, mate? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we keep pushing it back just because we want to. We have we do need to practice those type of things. It makes it a lot easier to. Well, yeah. this is actually the first time I've actually worked. First time since I've been in the band. They used to do it, you know, back in two thousand and six, two thousand and seven. We're just in a room writing a song, doing a jam session. Yeah. Going, Here you go, here's my here's my riff, I'll send it over to you, here's you know, send it back type of thing or yeah, here's my yeah. full song, don't fuck it up. Uh okay. That type of thing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. this is a much more collaborative type okay. of uh issue well issue, a collaborative approach. Type of, yeah, yeah, collaborative approach this time, okay. which is pretty cool. Uh having jazz. Nice. Laying down drums is always good because it's always been, or well, since I've joined the band, it's usually Lachlan or I will write the basic drum pattern and it doesn't really, you know, steer too far from it because it, you know, yeah. we, we well, you know the vibe like, you want. Yeah, yeah. we're both not dumb cunts when it comes to, you know, drumming. Type yeah, of yeah. Thing like, you know, oh, that is going to work like that. That is not impossible to play. That actually sounds. Yeah you know good let's play it like that um but yeah <clears throat> hopefully we'll be yeah laying it down either in march or or later it's just going to keep okay. march is the where okay. we're hoping okay. it's going to be it. and then you know rec- have it all mastered and do all that shit and maybe we might even do a bloody film clip don't know we probably won't though because we're yeah the laziest fucking band well ever. <laughs> so so hopefully at some point this year essentially oh definitely this year, yeah yeah i'm hoping i want to get it out but I'm, if i if everything goes to plan i'm hoping to get it out before uh or even during our tour with nicholas cage fighter in may mm-hmm. then yeah. that'd be good just to give us not that we can which by the way public. i saw mm-hmm. you guys i saw there's uh you guys are playing at uh you got one up here in may early early may you're playing yeah, at um, doing, nothing fest or something yeah nowhere um, fest and then i'm also doing something like Vinny's that yeah. Vinny's dive bit bar the yeah. day before yeah so i'm gonna try and get out to that uh i'm trying to try and get out to that festival one uh yeah, at, at um at the thing there because it's, it's a it's a great Tavern. venue yeah it's a great venue it's a great yep. venue um and you know it's there's a bunch of cool bands on that show so i definitely yeah, try yeah. and make my way out to that one uh may 4th so may 4th at uh, mansfield tavern so yep. if you want to see deprivation if you're in queensland and you want to see deprivation may 4th at most tavern or uh gold coast for finney's dive uh the night before um yeah yep. that'll be that's a good my, one for sure that's my queensland dates so far. absolutely <laughs> all right uh well kyle if you could indulge me and hit the button for the Let's first segment do it that you um, you had you 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 can, quick question you do, quarter you you want you you could do so you go all right all right all right so ladies and gentlemen it's time for the quick question quarter spelt with q's not k's because we don't roll like that and uh this is just where we run through some rapid fire questions with our esteemed guest just get to know his musical mind a little bit deeper Ooh. uh so with that start off with what was the first instrument that you learned to play guitar nice Nice. what was the first album that you purchased oh eminem show oh nice that's a good shout that's a good good shout that's a first too yeah i don't Mm. think we had anyone say that one before uh what was your what was your first live concert that you attended oh uh first first metal one was metal, the last metal for the brain in canberra back in 2008 Jeez. so i think i was yeah 12 
Yeah, nice. Pretty young. Nice. Jeez, medal for the brain. The, the uh, first, uh, first actual concert would have been the Waves at Woodford Toad Festival back in when I was there, yeah, pretty little. Remember yeah, it being awesome. pretty fucking cool though. Very cool, very cool. Uh, what's an instrument you've always wanted to learn but haven't yet? Hmm. That's a hard one because I can play a fair few of them. Uh, trumpet well. That would trumpet be a well. Good one. I reckon that okay, would be, so, that'd be a good so, one. So right, what can you how many can you play? Rattle them off for us. I can play I can play a bit of piano, I can play guitar, bass comes with that. I can play the didgeridoo, I can play uh, drums, I can I can I can do I uh, play the saxophone, I can do the clarinet, I can do like these are all it's getting lower and lower of how confident yeah. I am. But yeah, basically I can I can learn an instrument pretty quickly. There's trumpets. Oh. Trumpets a hard one. Yeah, like well, you got to bigger, bigger mouth. I can do raspberries yeah. with a bigger one, but not so much with a yeah, trumpet. There's one. so many little nuances that you got to get with it. It's it's yeah. hard, man. That one's hard. That All right. or uh, that that or some really cool, obscure stringed Indian or Oriental type mm. of instrument. Mm. Not a, not a sitar. Something other. Something. Weird. Something a bit more weird. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon that would be pretty cool. I like all that stuff nice That's uh okay if you could pick one big band or artist for deprivation to open a show for oh my god uh, yeah there you go. No, didn't even need to finish the yeah i mean <laughs> obvious choice obvious choice but but, but, but the correct on my choice, leg, man i have to get the it correct signed. choice the correct choice without Andy fail Goth is the ghost um, yeah it'd be that or kill switch yeah. those two yeah, those two are, good choices you know, yeah or Pan Pantera, since they're going at, at the moment as well. That, it's mm. those three. But well, P God. Pantera with an asterisk. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Who is a band or an artist that you're listening to at the moment that you think is underrated and deserves more attention? Mm. don't think they're underrated. I reckon they're sick, but I don't know how well... Oh, they're pretty well known. Darko US, uh, Tom Barber from Chelsea Grin's little side project with uh, the old drummer of Spite, and he mm. plays guitar as well. But it's like super, super nasty, nasty deathcore. Dark, but, dark, uh, Darko US, you said? Yeah, yeah, they do. Like they've had because he's uh, in an established band. He gets to get some cool uh, guest spots on some of his songs, mm. but. It's basically just those two doing whatever the fuck they want. They don't have a label. It's just I love that shit. Just doing. I like love this, when people this, get to do that. Yeah, like Tom Barber does like some clean singing, and he does it well. Other dudes got some. God, his vocal range is incredible. But yeah, I've been digging them every time they do, and they release something all the bloody time. You just go, oh yeah, I've got yeah a little bit of time off. Let's just write a fucking sick tune in fucking thirty <laughs> seconds. And that album art one. The artwork cover art for this is insane. Yeah, man. Yeah, the uh, it's like does... bright neon shit and just like yeah, one dude does them does them all and he does he's been doing a fair few yeah. different guys at the moment. It, but it yeah, check looks them very out. consistent. They're, uh, yeah, they're sick. Absolutely, we'll check them out. That looks awesome. I'm really keen for that. As soon as we're finished, I'm going to put them on while I cook dinner. Yeah, um, punch in the face stuff. Yes. Nice. What is something that people may be surprised to learn about you? <laughs> I'm a big softie. Oh. As much as this big uh, fucking tough exterior likes to be, I'm actually a great big putty cat. Oh, most, of us, most metal heads but everybody, are. But everybody probably already knew that as well. <laughs> most oh, most oh. metal heads are, right? Well, you know. well, to be fair, we've got two uh, interesting things. You can play a buttload of instruments and he's a big softie. Yeah. Any, any, anyone yeah, that's can. that smooth with the instruments has got to be, it's got to be soft, mm. a bit soft, mm. you know, in the right All places. Right. And the last, the last question, last question now, uh, you know, I'm, uh, since we last were, uh, around one another face to face, I have actually become an ordained minister, so I am officially a reverend. Uh, oh. And so this is where we take confession. So, what is your worst music sin? Oh, I played the bass with a pick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like it, mate. Fuck At out least of here you can with admit that. It. Yeah, I'm not a real I like bass player, man. I don't know. <laughs> I like it. 
I like it. I say it all the time. I saw someone uh, play last night. I'm like, your bass sounds so good and you play it properly. <laughs> fingers. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Play, yeah. Not for me, mates. <laughs> hey, all does right. it make sound? Well, there you go. Well, I can make heaps of sound. You're playing it properly. <laughs> uh, oh, except right. for the time that you watched me. It, it yeah, no, that was sound. different. That yeah, was yeah. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for that. Let's move on to segment number two. Kyle, if you would be so kind as to hit the thing. Yeah, I'll feed you soon, all right? Like, can you shut up? Fucking cat. I'm back. We're back. Right. So now it is time for our favorite segment, Get in the Bin, formerly known as the Fuck Off Files where basically we uh, go, hey, if you had all of the power in the world, if you're you know, omnipotent and all that bullshit, and you could snap your fingers and remove or remove or change three things about the music business, what would they be and why? Ooh. Fuck, that could be so many things, man. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and you, you, you know, you've oh, worked at change. venues and everything. And, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, every, yeah, You've yeah, done I know, it. I know. <laughs> to change... Uh, Pay more, uh, pay more to artists via streaming services. That needs to be absolutely a, a, a much larger thing. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm the first person to fucking say. Oh, uh, look, we the amount of times that we like we have talked ad nauseum about it mm -hmm. on this plat on here, um, and the mm -hmm. argument the argument often comes up. Well, yeah, okay, they have large these services have large revenue, but they're not making profit. I'm like, well, if they've been if Spotify has been a business for a decade and isn't making a profit, maybe they don't deserve yeah. to be a business anymore. Yeah. Pay like CEO less. if you can't yeah and yet they're already ripping off artists and they're still not making money they're not going to get there by paying artists a fair amount yeah you're fucking like the only way they'll get there is by wrong. stealing stealing mm. people's music and the, they've screwed themselves over by devaluing music in the mind of the consumer so they have made the rod for their own back mm. by starting off with the free tier and allowing people to listen to every all the music in the world for free why yeah. would anyone pay for music? Exactly. You just have to listen to an ad every now and then. Like, it's it's rotted the brain of the music consumer. Yep. And That's why it people has, don't listen to albums as much anymore. Yep. Right. And has <laughs> quick fire. And has thing. killed, yeah. has absolutely killed so much uh, about the business and made it unviable long term. Yep. Uh, Spotify had that rant. all you motherfuckers too much. We've had that rant so many fucking times. I bet. I bet. I bet. It's a big it's a big one amongst the musicians. Uh another one would be uh since COVID a lot of uh not that I've had to play at one, but I've just seen a lot of uh venues that fucking are doing merch cuts around the country. Like it's definitely a thing in the US. Like that's a uh, you like there's Fair enough, like you take a per head type of cut, like I'm all for that. You can do yep. bar fucking taking type of things. I don't give a fuck about that. But don't take like literally musicians livelihood for a lot of uh, like if you're a full on, this is your job touring musician. That's how you get your fuel money. That's how you get your fuse off See, the fucking merch. So like here's the thing is here's here's how I know that we came up through a lot of the same shit because your first two things that you have chosen are the two things that we have railed against more than anything <laughs> on this fucking podcast. Yep. We have screamed about it. Yep. Uh, so this is, oh, this is how I know, well, like we're on the same great shit. Minds. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, a... I agree. And my own, my only, my only, time when i say that it's okay is if the venue is providing people to sell your merch for you and those mm. people need to be paid and even yeah. then a a minor a small percentage five yeah. to ten percent max yeah is, like, even, yeah fuck, it's a fucking it's a lot of money like and then but if they are gonna it, it just ends up uh being a domino effect like if you're gonna yeah if you're gonna charge the bands to even sell your merch there the fucking t-shirt sales are just going to go up more and more like you're going to go to fucking yeah uh you're going to go to the uk and pay fucking 80 pound for a shirt like yeah to do that with an exchange rate you just paid yeah, it 170 dollars yeah like mm. it's 
It better be a bloody good bloody Gucci shirt for that. Yeah, this word, you get it. It's like this is going to want to be the best shirt yeah. I've ever owned. A, a, You're lucky. You're lucky. A Versace, Versace deprivation shirt. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be expensive. Instead of, instead of LV, just get DV. Mm. You know, just do your, yeah, just yeah, just do your own, do your own rip off of uh, Louis Vuitton. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, 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 I'm sure there won't be a lawsuit if I did that. Hey, <laughs> hey, any any publicity is Even... good publicity. Just when you get the yeah, cease exactly. and desist, just cease. It's, it's under the guise <laughs> of parody. Cease, yeah. It's under the guise of parody. It's fine. It's fair use. Um, <laughs> no, no, you right, have an L, the... We have a D. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another one three? would be uh, fuck. Can't really. It, it's I can't really help it. It'd be more a uh, bloody uh, bedroom guitarists need to have a little bit more confidence in themselves that they're such sick, sick, sick guitarists. But yeah, yeah. it can be daunting to be on stage. Yeah, have a bit of it's... have a bit of uh, I suppose a bit of. Uh, confidence in yourself to be able to play in front of a mirror, look like a fuckwit, so you have yep. a bit of stage presence because it doesn't matter if you can fucking shred like Lucas Mann from Rings of Saturn, but it's uh, yep. you got to look good. And I did watch Rings of Saturn live, and they were quite entertaining. Like he does, if they can play it, and they do, yep. even if it is a bit, <laughs> but he still gets into it like yeah. you've got to have someone is it, is it there needs to be a bit more confidence yeah um bit, which i don't know how you how you fucking just gotta that. do it like it's just, just gotta a, do it a little bit more advice to people that you know like you know you can you both be the sickest guitarist ever like we know that we can see that just you know, fucking yeah. have a bit of show it show it to me show it show yeah. me, show me how much you think you're a sick guitarist instead of yeah looking at your fretboard because i want to see a bit of showmanship like i've, yeah. I've said you know since moving up here to queensland and getting back amongst mm -hmm. it like i'm playing with so many so many young bands you know bands where the people were literally born after i started playing music and they yeah. they know they know the business really really well way better than we ever did mm -hmm. back in the day and uh but but that's the one thing that i keep seeing is i'm like you know, and I look, I never give unprompted advice. I, if I want to say something, I'll always be like, look, I don't, you know, I don't want to be the old, the old timer that's trying to tell everyone how they should do shit. Like, cause you know, I'm getting the gray, getting the gray and everything, but I'm like, I'm like, it may, you know, I'll strike up a conversation and then I'll be like, look, may I give you some, do you mind if I give you some advice? Like I'll put it in there and I say, mm -hmm. no, I'm cool. No worries. If they say yes, it's, you know, it's always just like, yeah it's, it's so often it's yeah you're right it's like they're up there and they're they're just looking at oh, with all the gear yeah all the gear like all like, ten thousand dollar ten thousand like, dollar rig and they just stood in place watching their hands the whole yeah. time like yeah, I, no, that, that, that it's, wasn't if it's that, embarrassing this is, big, this is my third point I've, i'm changing my third point okay the people who have all the gear need to realize that your gear might sound fucking sick in your bedroom but you need to go and test that in a bigger environment before you just go plug it in and go, oh yeah, yeah. Why isn't it working? Why isn't this, why does it sound trebly or fucking? Yeah, don't just scoop all. the mids. Yeah, don't don't like just it. scoop the mids. You just sit yeah, in, like you're sitting a... into it with headphones on, or you sit in a room that's like four feet by four feet, mm. and you got the thing. And cranked. if you and if you don't know how to use your gear and troubleshoot it quickly enough you need to simplify your gear a bit better i've watched so many bands when i was managing the basement it was young bands with all this gear because you know especially in canberra you've got uh, a lot of money so a lot of parents go i'm fucking my boy's gonna be the next rock star here's forty thousand dollars worth of fucking equipment that yeah that got. that fucking Which, music shop where turk works cleans the fuck up yeah like they, they <laughs> must know they like they know a bit of it but they don't know enough to and they're also young and they haven't been in the game long enough to go all right we've got a show tonight we're the third we're the opening band i've got all this gear that the sound guy's probably never fucking seen before let's come in hours before when the sound guy first get there troubleshoot your gear then talk to the sound engineer back then he's probably he's probably going to have some time 
He's probably yeah. going to go, yeah. And he's going to be in a good it. mood. They, fuck, you came in now. Like, not five minutes before you're about to play, go, oh, Unless yeah, it's Kurt. I've got, yeah, yeah. we run uh, we run five campers with uh, full in-ear back, like, full in-ear backing tracks. Uh, can you just go, yeah, sort this out? Oh, one of them is not working. Oh, my laptop died. Oh, we can't play. Like, <laughs> We can't. I don't. I've, I've seen it happen too many times, and there just needs to be a bit more. Uh, just yeah. those other bands need to tell bands to, you know, yeah, yeah. This is this is how if you're gonna have all this gear, you need to sort this out. And what yes. good thing about the basement was is that our audio engineers would let them know that if they you get like basically one fuck up, you get as many fuck ups as you want because it's part of your job. <laughs> But any, we'd have bands that you'd see more than once and go, all right, you boys need to come in a lot earlier just so, you know, and it's all sorted and you guys feel confident. Then you can go have your beers yeah. and talk yeah. to your mates. Like, what's another couple of hours going to do to your fucking social time? It's not going to do fuck all. It's probably going to improve it. Uh, yeah. And that's always been really good when bands have done that. It makes it smoother. And, yeah, uh, that's been it. There's, there's my yeah. points, mate. There's my ticks off. Wonderful, wonderful. All great, all great choices there. I 100 percent agree. Um, we'll throw we'll, we'll throw the confidence one in as number four as well, just to give us an extra one because you no, know. I like did, that. that like, was a like I said, one. I did. That was a positive. I did. Um, yeah, yeah. And and I think and you're right. Like so many of these people, they they can clearly play. Yep. They can clearly play. It's just. And, 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 and can play better than you, but me, that comes, fucking everybody that comes, combined. Yeah, it's so but fucking good. That, that comes down to you know something that we talked that, that I think we've talked about a couple of times in the past, which is a lot of the as you say, like the bedroom guitarists, for for lack of a better term, they they get that aspect down, but no one tells them, hey, you need to practice performing. You mm -hmm. need to practice standing up. You need to practice playing standing up. That's yep. a big one as well. Like play, yeah, and, and, like, and that's where like I'm yeah. really fortunate that I got to study music at TAFE under some very, very talented people who had been in the game, they'd been in the industry. Uh, and they were like, no, no, performing is something you have to actually practice. Mm. And I've, I've had people that I've played with look at me like I'm a fucking alien when I tell them that. They'll be like, I'll be moving yeah. around at practice, getting used to moving around, doing all this stuff. Like, and and they'll and they just stood there, and I'll be like, and then we play shows, and they never move around, and I'm like, you, well, yeah, you need, I'm like, you need to, you need to practice that, right? Like, you need to actually yeah. practice moving around. They're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, in the rehearsal room, like practice moving around in the rehearsal space, and they're like, I'll just do it on stage, it's fine. I'm like, you don't though. No, yeah, you I fucking to, don't. I have to, uh, yeah, I have to practice, yeah, in my in my bedroom, and not in front of a mirror, just in front of a camera seeing mm. if i could actually circle bang while playing mm. well, that would took ages it's hard to uh yeah it's it's hard to go okay don't throw your fucking head head off yeah. like it's it could be it's yeah took me a while got there though lots of uh sore necks yes not yeah. anymore, yeah. not anymore. awesome well that's uh that's where we're at we'll wrap this one up now thank you so much for joining us um nice you fellas. you've You're obviously got that so you mentioned there's a the tour coming up we mentioned the queensland dates what other uh got... what other dates have you got there for us on yeah that? we're playing a show in orange as well we're playing in orange on the 6th of april at the victoria hotel it's going to be a uh, free entry hey. yeah, yeah, love some free entry orange. Orange show, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, like a offshoot of the four on the floor because I don't think they're doing the four on the floor there anymore. I think that's uh... been stopped after a, a long time. I think they've gone for fifteen years or something like that. But uh, this is yeah, a little revival of that. Get some metal mm. back in the the uh, into the scene. But yeah, playing with some just some local boys from Orange, which is good. Get to play with uh oh, Stone Sovereigns playing, which is uh one of the old guitarists' new bands. So we get to play with good old Jozer again. Get to see his big old beer and his sick fucking right hand. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> um, and then in May we are doing yeah this uh the with yeah, bleeding art, we could be bleeding art collective of uh 
yeah, sorters sorters is out for this one. This is the Bleeding Venom tour with Nicolas Cage fighter, and uh, that. But we're also having uh, on select dates Artifact and Lycanthrope are joining us on a couple as well, um, which is good. I don't think I don't think Lycanthrope are coming up to um, Queensland, unfortunately. But I think the Artifact yeah. boys are coming. Like Lycanthrope was on the Nothing. Oh, no, they, they are coming. Poster. Yep. Yeah, yep. Lycanthrope are coming to uh, Brisbane. They are doing the those dates. They're not doing down south dates for us. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, Gold Coast on the 3rd uh, at Vinnie's. May 4th is Brisbane at Nowhere Fest. Mm -hmm. And then the week after, doing May 10th down at the Crown and Anchor in Adelaide. Uh, May 11th at the Avalon Hotel in Melbourne. Uh, week after that, May 16, doing La La La's in Wollongong, which I've nice. been there for a while. Bloody hell. Uh, and then next day, Burdekin at Sydney. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the day after that is going to be good old Canberra show. Jeez. The is that AMP and and playing at the Burdekin? Which one? You playing at that AMP that? club at the Burdekin? Ah, uh, yeah, whatever that, probably that middle floor bloody is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, that's usually where they put the metal bands. Yeah, they do. One, nice. one floor up. And then right. and the week after that, we actually get to go to bloody Tasmania, get to play at Alter and Hobart. Oh, hell yeah. Jeez, be sad. Tasmania. That'll be sick. Yeah, yeah you all have got a good uh, couple of months coming up by the sound of it, which is oh, awesome. Yeah, that, that, single, that single that you guys are working on, which is awesome. So yes. go and follow Deprivation on all the socials and, and on all of the music nice. platforms you got. Go and listen to all of the shit to get ready for the new one. Uh, you'll be, I'm guessing you'll hopefully be playing the new one on the tour, maybe. Oh, uh, I guess we'll... Guess we'll see if it's out. ready to have go. To, we actually have to <laughs> practice and see... Uh, yeah, <laughs> see well, we maybe. Go. But yeah, that is... Maybe. Uh, that, that hopefully, but we will because we have Lycanthrope on tour with us. We will be try when we're there playing with us. We'll try play the song that we did with Dan Gregg from Lycanthrope, which is uh, which is through the rib cage. Mm -hmm. He's got yeah, nice. he's doing some clean singing and then rips a fucking nasty verse as well. So that'll be the first time that we've played that live. So that'll be fuck that'll yeah. Be it's always man. cool to do that. It's yeah. always cool to get to do that shit. So yeah, hopefully we can make that happen. But if we, yeah, that that'd be one of the new newer tunes that we've never played live. But we're gonna try bust out, try get a mm -hmm. bit more of the hardcore kids going, because we are definitely the only metal band on this tour. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be sick. Oh, well, be good. You get to kick some people in the face. Yeah, um, yeah. perfect. <laughs> so awesome. But before we wrap it up, is there any anything else you want to shout out or promote? With the band or anything else you got going on that you're doing oh, i'll do a couple of shout outs shout out to bleeding art collective for helping us out with this tour shout out to greg he's uh he's been he's been the man and also uh shout out to unreal studios in uh rouse hill in sydney those guys have been helping us out a lot fucking good boys there so if you yeah, they got a good any... setup going on over there that's a fucking sick setup isn't it yeah no andrew andrew and dan are doing a really good job there we uh we like those boys and we wish them all the best to you know support the local music scene um and yeah that's all my shout outs Fuck everybody awesome else. <laughs> all right mate well thank you very very much jesse for joining us uh like i said thank go you. and follow deprivation on everything yeah and uh, listen listen to all their shit because it fucking goes hard and uh, get out I to one of those shows it, yeah. that he mentioned go and go <laughs> Get out to those shows because, uh, you know, you want to see the bands that have played it back in and you got two of them in these fucking shows. Yeah. So that's a good one. That's a good one. You should, you should like be like back and comes to Australia. Just, just yeah. Pull, a, pull. yeah. And that's when, that's when you call it. That's when you call yeah. it. Whack it. Whack it. Off. Whack whack it. it. Whack it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ah, well, nice thank one. you very much, my man. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you to my co-host, Kyle, a.k.a. Beer Buddy. I am the thank Reverend you, Raph. We are the Two Dudes Who Talk Music, and we will see you guys on the next one. Peace out. Peace.